Hello. Um, gathering my thoughts. Time now is five past four and stats of today. Thought I'd do this for you. 663 kilometers today. That's 411 miles, which isn't bad for UK. Um, in just over 12 hours, from start to finish. So, uh, yeah, Scunthorpe. So it went from um, A34, Sutton's got any services, up to Sunny Scunny, tipped in about half an hour. And that's the only reason I managed to do so much today. And then I've got, just got back to Newbury. So I'm in Newbury services. Parked up, I've been in the pay. I've managed to put a clean t-shirt on and then chuck my breakfast all the way down the front of it. So if you see any stains, well, that's just the way it is. Gasping as well. Right. Um, I was going to talk about mental health. Now, whilst I've been driving today, I've been thinking about it quite a bit. <clears throat> um... The problem we have, being British, and I don't know about the other nationalities, but being British, it's, it's, it's this age old thing of stiff upper lip, yeah, it'll be all right, have a cup of tea. Yeah, it'll be better in the morning, sleep on it, you'll feel better then. Well, the honest answer is, that's a load of bollocks, isn't it? Have a cup of tea, yeah, it might be all right for about five minutes. Then after that, You'll go, oh, fuck, no, no, it ain't really, is it? And as much as we like to believe and try to, uh, we're, we're, all, the, all we're doing is kidding ourselves. And the other thing is, is that more people suffer in silence than we know about. Because it's, it's not viewed as being strong, is it, you know? You know, if you, if you if you if you if you show your weaknesses, you know, you, as a bloke, you don't you don't tend to do that. Um, and of course, so you don't get help, or you don't talk to anyone, or you you, you know, it just and it, and it goes, it festers away, and it gets you down, and it grinds you down. And everybody has has a different view on what what their weakness is. You know, what might be a weakness to one person may be a trivial matter to somebody else, and vice versa. Like, Kira, like I think I said earlier, Kira always, always says to me, you don't worry about the big things, you worry about all the little things. I said, yeah, I do worry about the little things. Because if you add enough of those little things up, they, they contribute to be a big thing, and then, 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 then you can worry about the big thing. But So I don't have, tend to have many big things to worry about, in fact, very few, and none. But I have lots of little things. And that's the bit that get you, that's the bit that can get you down. Now, <clears throat> I think I'm pretty well placed to talk about um, mental health because I've been in some. Oh, what's that? No, I've been in some tight spots over the years. Some very tight spots, and uh, you know, it's 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 not always easy. It's not easy at all. When I came, just to give you an example, when I came down from uh, Scotland, I left Scotland in 2005. And I left a lovely house. I'd split up with my wife. And um, I'd, uh, I'd come down with what I could get into a Vauxhall Corsa, because I was a driving instructor at the time, and that's, that's my, that was my driving school car. So, and, and very little cash. And left the vast majority of my things behind because I just couldn't get them in the car. And I had this mad decision, decided to go, fuck it, do you know what? I'm leaving. I'm, I've had enough. I can't do it any longer. So I extracted myself from the situation and headed down south. And I had to live in my mum and dad's box room, which consisted of a very small room. It was almost like living under the stairs, you know what I mean? On a Z bed. And it was just, it was just nightmarish, absolutely nightmarish. Plus, my mum and dad weren't the easiest people to live with, especially when you get to, you know, 
back 15 years ago, what would I have been then? 40 odd. You know, it's just it's just not not good going back to your parents' house, you know. And uh, I was in a really bad way. I was in a really bad way. And uh, I was I'd, I'd I'd drowned me sorrows. That's what I did. I drowned me sorrows. And uh, that wasn't really the answer. I had a good time, <laughs> and I misbehaved myself, but um. It wasn't the answer. Um, but you hide it all, don't you? You know, to everyone else, I was the life and soul of the party. Inside, I was fucking dying. You know? Didn't You know, from outside, I didn't have a care in the world. I was, you know, I'd, I'd got myself on my feet again. I was earning money. But it took a little while, and while all that was going through, and a divorce and all of that lot, it was a shitty old time. You know, I'd lost a lot of money, I'd lost my house, I'd lost my business, and I had to start again. It was, it, it, it played heavily on my mind. Um, and I've had various other, in my first marriage, and th that was my second marriage, first marriage was pretty traumatic as well. Because not only did I lose everything, but I also lost my daughter. And, uh, which I've now got back again, which is the unbelievably good. Uh, and actually going to see her on Saturday, as I've already mentioned. So, yeah, I've had quite a few setbacks and upsets in my life. So I'm pretty well versed in mental health, I think, to be able to sort of qualify me to talk about it. And as that old saying, if you haven't been, you, you've got to have been there to come back. Because if you haven't been all the way down to the bottom, that's where you've got to go to be able to come back again. And if you haven't quite got to that bit yet where you've got to turn around and come back, then you just got to keep going a little bit longer because eventually you'll get there and you'll go, Do you know what? This ain't right. And then you start your journey back. And it's a slow journey. It is a fucking hard slog. And sometimes you'll, you, you'll end up back where you started from. Down at the bottom of the hill. But you just got to keep going. And it's not easy. It really isn't. And... Um, and like I said, you can get upset over little things. And it's often the little trivial matters that, that can upset you the most. You know, your whole world can be falling apart and you get upset because you just dropped a mug of milk on the floor. You know? <laughs> That's the way it is, isn't it? You know? Um, or anxiety. I've started suffering from anxiety. Um, I couldn't work out what was wrong. You know, I'd get fretful and, um, you know, grouchy. Gr and I'm normally more grouchy than I am. And I'm normally pretty grouchy. But I'd get stressful and I'd start aching and, oh, it was just feeling shit. And then it was always on the build up to something. And I noticed it but when I was going on holiday. This time, on the build up to the holiday, I get really stressed. I always do. And um, Kira noticed it. And I said to myself, I'm really not feeling it. I'm not, I'm not feeling good. And that was the, the day before. And then I um, got to the holiday, day of the holiday, and I was, I was, pff, felt rubbish. Absolutely, I felt, I just, I was pained. Headaches, tight, and I just put it down to tiredness, working hard, and all the rest of it. And um, we got to Holland, and it fucking, it evaporated. It evaporated. I started sleeping well. Feeling better, and it was all—it was all to do with the build. Because I know what happens on the on the run up to a holiday. It's left to me and Kira, and um, it's a pain in the ass. I get—I got back, you know. I get back late at night, and then the next day we're leaving early. And of course, there's everything to be done. And um, the kids that are twenty and eighteen do is the bare minimum, and that stresses me right out. Don't stress Kira out, but it stresses her out because I'm stressed out. And uh, so I know what what I was in store for, but it just really, really stressed me out. And that's that, 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 there's a pattern involved in that. 
but it's identifying the patterns and being able to do something about it. So we need to work out how we do things differently for next time around and see if that alleviates the problem. Um, but it's identifying what the triggers are. And once you've identified what the triggers are, you can do something about it. But there is no quick fix. There is no easy solution. Um, talking about it helps. Talking out loud helps. And it doesn't have to be to your partner or your wife or your girlfriend or your husband or whoever it may be that needs to. It could be somebody totally, either totally different. Whether that's a counsellor or a close friend or someone even you don't even know really well. But just being able to talk a load of shite, which is what I do. <laughs> and this is what I find it quite, um, what's the word, cathartic, is that the word? doing these videos because it um, allows me to unburden myself and talk shite to people that I don't know and um, yeah it seems to work for me because I felt better as a result of it because I was before I started these videos I started feeling a bit you know a bit iffy certain things were getting me down and there's a there's a repeat cycle and then oh, I don't know it's, it's, you just gotta. It's difficult to know what works for you, you know. There is, there is no quick fix. I'd like to say there is. Um, I think anyone who's suffering from a form of depression, stroke, anxiety, stroke, mental illness, mental health, and that was the other thing. Mental health. That's, it's got this stigma, isn't it? That's the other thing I want to talk about. It's got this stigma. Which is why a lot of people don't do about it. You go, oh, I'm suffering from, I'm suffering with mental health problems. They think you're like some sort of fucking lunatic and he's locking up in a padded cell. You know, oh, you're fucking mental, you. You know, it's that's not the case because you're fully functioning. You're doing what you need to do to get by. You just have a few triggers that set you off. Um, but the stigma attached to it is 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 terrible really is and that needs to be addressed it's nothing to be ashamed of you know everybody and, and, and like I say those people and I, I belong to a lot of trucking forums you know and um, groups on Facebook and there's some of them are the worst some of them come on there and go oh, I'm feel, feeling a bit you know feeling a bit down and somebody else will go oh fucking pull yourself together will you mate this ain't no fucking counselling group because I, I saw it the other day Anybody, I don't know if anyone else saw it. Pull yourself together. This ain't this ain't no fucking counselling group. This is all about fucking roughly dufty truckers. Oh, do fuck off, will ya? You know what a cock. Anyone who doesn't suffer, like I said earlier, anyone who doesn't suffer from mental health is either fucking delusional, and you don't even know what fucking day of the week it is, or you're lying. So I think everybody suffers in some way or form suffers from mental health and it's, it's, and this is the thing because so many people do suffer from it it shouldn't be stig stigma part stigma you know the fucking word I'm talking about it shouldn't be stigma stig uh, you, yeah you get me drift drift stigmatized stigmatized that's the word it shouldn't be it really shouldn't and it pisses me off when people go, oh, fucking loopy loo. Hang on a minute. You know, there are people with, you know, and there's there's various degrees of mental health, isn't there? You know, it, it, it ranges from, it's like autism, isn't it? It ranges from, the, the spectrum is like from down there somewhere to up there somewhere. And that's the same with mental health. It affects people differently and in different ways. You know? Um, some people can't get out of bed in the morning. You know, because because their anxiety is so bad, they you know it stops them from functioning and doing things that normal people do on a normal. I mean, I'm, uh, there's me saying normal. No one's fucking normal. You know, but it stops them from doing the day-to-day -day activities that most people can can do on a on 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 a, on a regular basis. You know, some people can't get out of bed and go and put a kettle on. 
some people can go out the front door. You know, it's all it's all part of the problem, isn't it? You know, and it needs to be addressed and dealt with. And, I, and we just haven't got the resources to be able to deal with it. Um, and this is where self help comes into it a little bit. You know, but some people are so far down the line that they that they can't they they do need professional help. Um, you can't self help yourself. Well, you can do a little bit, I guess. But, you know, you do need professional help. You might even need forms of medication. Because that was the other thing, isn't it? Medication. I learned about... I've never had to take any medication, but I know people that have. Um, and what it is, is it's with, it's with um, depression. Um, it's a chemical imbalance. And by taking different forms of medication, you can restore that imbalance, which then makes you slightly better well that's why I understood it whether that's true or not I don't know but that's why I understood it and do you know what I mean it's, it's so but again there's this stigma about being depressed oh, pull yourself together have a cup of tea it's, it's, it just gets gets. It, that pisses me off when I hear it you know so everybody needs a little bit of help from time to time so don't feel that you're the only one because you're not and uh, I know, I don't mention no names, but somebody said to me the other day on here, said, oh, I, I thought I was the only one. You're not, mate. You're not at all. Some people show it, some people don't. Some people hide it. Some people let it all blur out. And um, some people don't even know they got it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Some people, have, they go all through life not realising that they they've they've they're suffering from some form of mental illness, whether it's depression or anxiety or or a bit of both, because they all go hand in hand, they all overlap each other. And uh, yeah, amazing. So you, it's difficult. But I think what I'm trying to put across is is, is that you're not the you know if you are suffering you're not the only one. There's lots of people that are lots of people and take comfort in that you know because a lot of people think oh it must be me it's just me it's me it's not your fault it's my fault well no not really it's it's everybody's fault you know you're not to blame for feeling like you are it's a set of circumstances normally beyond your control to be fair um in, in which case you just gotta you gotta open up about it and you've got to talk to someone I think is the, is the best way but like I say you're, you're not alone and I think if you realize that you're not alone or you or, or you could contact a group or and it's a bit like a lot of ex-forces um, suffer from PTSD and depression and anxiety from, from for various different reasons um, and those people don't realize what a tight-knit group people who served are and for those that haven't served finding that tight-knit group because there's always help out there there's always help out there and it's easier for today for, for um, people that have served to be able to find help there's so many charities out there but and there are for, for people that haven't served as well um, but do you you know do, do, it's like oh no I don't want to waste anyone's time <laughs> I'm not going to phone them because I feel like I'm wasting their time I'm not that bad well actually you might be you just don't realise how bad you are because probably no one's had the bollocks to tell you or they don't want to upset you or they don't want to make a big thing of it because it's something that we normally sweep under the carpet and we don't talk about it because it's like when you know if we talk about it we've got to show our feelings and we've got to tell some truths and no but not everybody wants to hear truths do they you know so there is people to talk to and I think you just gotta you gotta bite a bullet and you've got to talk to someone but like I said I just, I just want people to know that you're not alone. You're not the only one. 
countless people have gone through what you've gone through and dealt with it successfully and come out the other side in a better frame of mind. And, any, and it's all possible to do. That's the, that's, the, that's the best thing. It is possible to do it. You know? But you've got to address the situation to start off with. And admit to yourself that there is an issue. There is a problem. And that's the, that's the biggest hurdle to start off with. Admitting that there's a problem. It's a bit like Alcoholics Anonymous, isn't it? Stand up, say your name. <laughs> Uh, fucking hell. Yeah. So, um, it's all doable though. So stay with it. Drop me a message on Instagram. Same username. Fat Bloke Travels. Drop me a message and I can get back to you. I'm not going to do it on here because this isn't, this isn't the platform to do it on. But if you need to talk, drop me a message on there. We'll have a chat. Alright? So, I hope whether that's made anyone feel any better or not, I've got no idea. But like I said, there's there's always hope. There's always a future, and um, there's always a way forward. Even when you can't even see a way forward, somebody else might be able to go. Actually, peep around the corner there. I can see a glimmer of light around there. It's just you're not stood in the right angle to be able to see it, but I can, and I'm only two foot away. You know. So. Um, Send me a message if everything gets a bit bit tough, you know? Send me a message, I'll get back to you. Alright? So, uh, take it easy. Speak to you later.